like a sheep that's tossed and driven and battered by an angry sea when the storms of life are raging and the fury it falls on me I wonder what I have done oh, that makes this race so hard to run I just say to my soul take care to do the right thing that's when he was present on every hand oh, then I look up and I wonder why oh, good fortune passes me by I just say to my heart, be patient, cause I know the Lord will make a way somehow, the Lord will make a way somehow, when beneath the cross that I bow. Understanding oh, out of all the good that I do, I go to friends for kind consolation. Good morning, faithful listeners. This is Agnes Aventurin, and I thank you for joining us in this segment of Chapter 27 of Acts of the Apostles. The meditation for today is entitled, Whom the Lord Calls, He Equips. Whom the Lord Calls, He Equips. Little did the crew who were about to journey on this ship know what waited ahead of them at sea. Paul warned them not to travel. But then again, who was he to inform them what not to do or what they could do? After all, Paul was a convict and they believed they were without sin. Had they listened to the advice of Paul, 
they would not have experienced such a horrible predicament at sea. Paul was not only persecuted on dry land, but faced bad weather on sea on his journey to Rome. The captain and the owner of the ship were probably very stubborn, or there weren't any tools in those days to predict the condition of the weather like we have today. Thus, causing them to be battered by the howling winds, heavy rainstorms, thunderstorms, flash lightning, and high seas, not forgetting the horrible rocking of that boat back and forth, which might have caused people to become seasick and weak. At the end, they had no other choice than to cast off the anchors and leave them in the sea. And to loosen the ropes that tied the steering oars, they then hoisted the foresail to the wind with the hope to drift to the shores and was unsuccessful with their plans. They did not make it to the beach, but instead they struck a reef and ran the ship aground. The boat stuck and remained immovable, but the stern was being broken up by the force of the waves. Here again, Paul was rescued from death. This was God's doing. Paul made use of this situation to witness to many on the island of Malta while they were stuck there. I can remember when I was a little girl hearing about this captain who did not use maps to travel between these little islands surrounding St. Martin. He would get up in the morning and rely on the sun, the daylight, to travel back and forth. And one day he lost track of where he was going because a bad weather sat in. They ran out of fuel and drifted far away from this region. Thankfully, others who were expecting him alerted the authority that the crew was missing and sent assistance for them. God really and truly promised us never to leave us nor forsake us. I have decided to research some information on tools that are used to predict the weather conditions in today's time. Weather and Climate Operational Supercomputer System states, observational data is collected by Doppler radar, radio sonders, weather satellites, buoys, and other instruments are fed into computerized numerical forecast models. The models use equations along with new and past weather there to provide forecast guidance to our meteorologists. They observe the planet with weather balloons, satellites, buoys, radars, sensors on commercial aircraft and ships, coastal and river gauges, and nationwide network of ground-based observing stations. I googled for the same information about ancient time to determine the weather, but to no avail. Growing up, I received, I remembered hearing my parents saying, weather is coming. When they saw certain birds flying around in the air, seemingly they understood the seasons in the year. After the ship was destroyed, they threatened to take the law into their own hands and murder Paul, but that was not his fate. He was rescued again by Jehovah God, who he served. Remember, whom the Lord calls, the Lord equips. God can do anything. In this chapter, Paul was the weather forecaster. He predicted what was going to come before the journey and what and was complete and advised the crew on board the ship. Paul comforted them that none of them on the ship 
would have lost their lives during their dilemma. He received the necessary information directly from God and he communicated it as he received it. He was their reliable source. Paul endured trials, tribulations, tortures, mockery, hatred, beaten and was shackled with chains while in Jerusalem. He was accused and summoned to court and imprisoned for things he hadn't done, but nothing deterred him from carrying out his tasks from the Lord. God allowed Paul to experience horrible changes wherever he traveled. And at the end of all his sufferings, it turned out to be for good reasons. Paul used these moments as opportunities to witness to people for Christ, all for the glory of God. This was noticeable in most of these chapters in the book of Acts. God always spoke to Paul and he recognized God's voice. Paul knew from the start that life is not about oneself, but of God's. Our main purpose here on earth is to serve God. I'm not referring to attending church on Sundays or whenever the church door opens or helping someone when we feel like it. What I've learned thus far, it's about going to the extreme for Christ, no matter what happens to us during the process. We must persevere for Christ until the end of our lives, no matter the consequences. I therefore encourage you to take time from your busy schedule and listen to these readings over and over and over again. There is much to learn from them as I'm doing the same. I know it is uncomfortable doing something foreign to us, so we find excuses not to witness to others for Christ. We are waiting to be spotless of sin, which is impossible. Listen to what Paul wrote in Romans 3.23 that he is not perfect and will not pretend to be. However, we are to live in this world, but not be of this world. This he said in 2 Corinthians 10, 3. So we will never be perfect either, and we all sin, period. Let us not make excuses such as, I am not perfect as an excuse to sin. Instead, try to fulfill our purpose, and that is to please God. Questions to ponder on. When we leave church, what is our conversation like on our way home? Do we discuss the message, the scripture, or a song? and use them as an opportunity to share with those among you? Or do we think or say after we leave church, I got that over with for today, so I can get on with my other stuff for today? <laughs> yes, you are probably laughing and thinking, but well, where she's coming from with this? But I have experienced person saying these words. Do we pick up our Bible from where we rested it last Sunday and pick it back up on the following Sunday when we are on our way to church? Or do we use it during our daily meditation with God? Are we praying to God? Here are a few suggestions we can do if we have decided to witness to others for the Lord. Pray for an opening. Pray for the correct words. Pray the person is receptive to hearing the word of God. We may be just needed to start the seed 
for it only takes a spark. Words quoted from Sister Ali and Henry. The Bible says the Holy Spirit will give you the words that say now when you need them. Luke 12, 12, taken from Bible Gateway. Information on the weather tools was cited from capital N-O-A-A dot gov website. Now let's go to God in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, you promise never to leave us nor forsake us. As you sustained Paul and those with him through the storm at sea, assure us of your presence as we endure the trials of this fallen world and grant us your peace and wisdom that we may be faithful witnesses to you. Father, we look forward in gracious deliverance through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Christian friends, dedicating your day with the Word of God in prayer and meditation is nutrition for our soul. We thank you for making this ministry a part of your day and God bless you and your family. Listeners, if you are blessed by this ministry, I encourage you to share it with your friends and family so they too can experience the same. You can also follow us on the Methodist Church St. Martin Circuit Facebook page and on YouTube. I'm